We got some big game delays and cancellations. The coalition is gearing up for Gears 6. There's another huge leak from Naughty Dog in terms of The Last of Us Part 1, plus more. So let's get into it. All right, guys, before we get into this, if you are new here, as I see a lot of you are and you enjoy this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. So Ubisoft had their fiscal year 23 Q1 earnings call, and there are some big updates for a bunch of upcoming games from Ubisoft. The biggest update of them all is that Avatar Frontiers of Pandora has been delayed to 2023 and may even be pushed all the way to 2024. So we don't know too much about this game. We have seen a couple of trailers for it. It is a first person game where you're going to be taking on the role of Navi running through Pandora and taking on unknown threats. But that's pretty much all we knew about the game. There was never an official release date, but there were reports out there that it was going to be released sometime in 2022. And obviously now that isn't the case anymore. As during the earnings call, they had this to say they are committed to delivering a cutting edge immersive experience and that it will be a major multi-year opportunity, but that it has now been delayed until 2023 2024 citing the same reasons that most games are getting delayed these days just the video game industry all of the constraints that are going on as to why the game has to be delayed so that's pretty disappointing because i thought if they were actually going to release this in 2022 it was going to be just a massive release for the year but it makes sense why it's delayed. I mean, we really haven't seen any gameplay of it yet just the cinematic trailers and we're heading into august really only five more months left and if there isn't any gameplay of a game that's supposed to be coming out this year the likelihood that's actually going to release in the time frame of 2022 is probably extremely low for example we've seen lots of gameplay already of the new Saints Row game that they showed off. There was actually just another 20 minute gameplay trailer that they put out that is slated to be released in August. And that game obviously is gonna not be delayed further into 2023. But with games like Avatar, Frontiers, Pandora, or any other game that is supposed to be coming out in 2022, if you haven't really seen too much gameplay of it, I doubt it's actually going to make its way out. Now, besides those two games that were delayed, there are four games that Ubisoft is completely canceling. So there's two unannounced games that we have no idea what those could be. And then they are also canceling Splinter Cell VR, which didn't really hear anything too much about that before they actually went ahead and canceled it. And then there's Ghost Recon Frontline the Battle Royale game. And when they announced Ghost Recon Frontline as being a Battle Royale game, there was a lot of backlash from the community. We know the debacle of Ghost Recon Breakpoint that was really a bad game in the entire series, especially coming off Ghost Recon Wildlands, which was a ton of fun. And just the overall series has a pretty loyal fan base that loves the series and they're seeing it move to something that they don't want to see it move to. And then they announced a Battle Royale game which again, probably not something that Ghost Recon fans want to see. So they've completely scrapped that. And when they do finally bring out a new Ghost Recon game, here's hoping that they can get it back to where it was. I think that's what Ubisoft has to do with the Ghost Recon franchise is bring it back to like the advanced warfighter days, the future soldier days. Those were such great games and get the community excited for Ghost Recon again, because after Breakpoint, it feels like a lot of people aren't into the series as much anymore. Now I've heard Breakpoint, I haven't played yet, but I've heard that they, they have done a lot of stuff with it that have improved the game but it's also the game that ubisoft utilized first for their nft stuff which had also a lot of backlash and overall from the numbers of what they sold off those nfts didn't do very well and ubisoft is still continuing with that ubisoft course program even though obviously people are pushing against it so there's a lot of weird stuff here going on at ubisoft cancellations delays They've been in a bit of a rut recently, so we'll have to wait and see how all this works out. But I'm definitely excited for these games like Avatar Frontiers Pandora, I think can be just an incredible game and something that if they do it right, will be one of those games that people are going to be talking about for a very long time. So I'm okay with the delays as long as when it comes out, it is a quality product. Jumping over here to talk about the dreaded NFTs getting into video games, as we know, it is something that a lot of companies are pushing forward. They see it as a big way to make money with the earn as you play method. Square Enix being one of the leaders with this new method and pushing their NFTs, even though the community has come out multiple times and said that they don't want it. We first saw Ubisoft with their Ubisoft Quartz program here with the Ghost Recon stuff, the stuff we just talked about, where apparently they had just made over $400 total 
with the Ubisoft course Ghost Recon items. So obviously the initial launch of this was not very successful, but that didn't deter them. They're still going ahead with Ubisoft Quartz. And now we have Square Enix who has said going into 2022, they are going to be really pushing their NFT stuff and they're not backing down from it. And they've announced their first project here. And this has to do with an NFT and Final Fantasy VII. So it says here, to facilitate the extraordinary weight waste of fans' goodwill, Square Enix has partnered with Engine, an NFT company that will store Square Enix's tokens on its Affinity blockchain. And starting today, so this was actually yesterday, consumers will be able to pre-order a physical action figure that comes with a code redeemable for a digital NFT. Now, when this article was written, they weren't sure how the action figure looked and what it was all about. But now we have an update and it is going to be an action figure of Cloud, obviously the, the most prominent character in Final Fantasy VII. And it says here, the digital plus edition is a set product of physical action figure with one each of exchange tickets to redeem digital certificate of authenticity and digital version of the figure. Both digital certificate of authenticity and digital version of the figure are managed by the blockchain technology known as NFTs. Digital certificate of authenticity provides proof of authenticity for your original purchase of the figure. Digital version of the figure can be enjoyed on your smartphone or your PC through a dedicated website. Now, what does that mean? Being able to enjoy this through your smartphone, we don't really know, but I'm guessing it's just going to be like a picture of it on your phone. Something that I don't really have, I haven't really wrapped my head around yet when it comes to NFTs, just thinking about why people would be excited about an exclusive JPEG and not actually want a physical item of something. At least with this, you are getting the physical figure, which I mean, it's pretty cool looking if you like Final Fantasy VII, if you're really into cloud and you collect figures like this, that part's okay, but it's the digital side of things that they are trying to push, which they're trying to create this artificial scarcity of that digital product in order to increase the price for what they're selling with their NFTs. This will actually be costing $160 if you pre-order it now, and it is set to release in November, 2023. Now that's not it. They are also gonna be attaching NFTs to their trading cards. So Square Enix, Final Fantasy, they have a trading card game and they're saying here that next year they're going to be releasing Final Fantasy VII trading card sets with NFTs bundled into packs as standard. And anyone who buys packs of trading cards will be able to redeem a digital version that exists as an NFT. So Square Enix is not backing down from this stance. They are going to be pushing through their NFTs. They're going to be pushing the products that they want to push with this blockchain technology. And if these sell very well, and I feel like people are going to see this figure and want to pick it up, they're going to continue doing this. And even if they don't sell very well, they may go down the lines of Ubisoft course to think that this is the future of what gamers want and what gamers are going to get. And they're going to continue to try to get ahead of the curve. So we'll have to wait and see because these are the stances of Square Enix and the stance of Ubisoft. But then we have an Xbox Game Studio stance that is the complete opposite. And it's very good to see. And I think this game itself has more pull, has more weight in the video game industry for how big it is and how influential it is. And it is Modang Studios, Minecraft, and they have put their official stance on NFTs and blockchain technology. And they are not going to be pushing NFTs within their game, which I think is a great thing because it's Minecraft, because it's so influential. It's also part of Xbox Game Studios. And I'm hoping that this is going to influence all of the Xbox Game Studios to go ahead with this stance as well going forward but here is what they say blockchain technologies are not permitted to be integrated inside our minecraft client and server applications nor may they be utilized to create nfts associated with any in-game content including worlds skins personal items or other mods and then according to mojang they, they think that the digital scarcity created by nfts is in direct opposition of Minecraft's pursuit of safety and inclusivity across their entire ecosystem. And they also mention the volatile nature of the NFT's value and how there's so much risk with investing in these things and the artificial value of some of these NFTs that get brought up and then they get completely dropped and you're just out a bunch of money. And that's the one thing with NFTs is I don't fully understand them, but I do have somewhat of a grasp on them now as they are just digital ownership of items that people put a value on, but they're literally just pictures that you can download for a lot of these things. And it's all artificial. The value of these things 
four, these digital items are, are definitely all artificial. They put out a certain amount. And I guess you could say that's the same thing with physical things, but at least with physical things, you have it in your hand. It's not something that can just disappear with the snap of a finger, with the erasing of a database or of the blockchain. If something were to happen and there's no more digital proof, there's no more internet, that asset is gone and you're out of your money with the physical thing it is still there. So I don't know how I feel about this. The one thing I thought NFTs would be okay for would be if you were buying digital items within a game, then you want to sell them to somebody else if you're done with that game. But I feel that would be a good way to implement it. But I mean, you don't really need NFTs to do that. You could just have a marketplace within your game that allows you to buy and sell items for that particular community. So I don't know how all this stuff is going to work if it's ever gonna actually become mainstream within video games. But as of right now, you can tell the communities against it. And it's good to see that you have these major companies like Mojang with one of the biggest games ever and one of the best games of all time, just in terms of what it meant to the culture of video games, what you can do with it, how creative you can get with it, all of that type of stuff. Minecraft is up there putting a stance against the NFTs for now because I think this will have a lot of influence across the industry. All right, to end things off, just a couple of game updates. And we have to start with this one here, something I talked about in yesterday's video, and that is The Last of Us Part 1, the remake of the game that is coming out this September. So there was a leak going around that there is no gameplay improvements for this game, even though Naughty Dog and Sony have said in their official description of the game that there will be gameplay improvements. And now we have even more leaks. I hadn't seen these videos yesterday, but we got some more leaks of the actual game itself, some gameplay. And if you were to go through and watch these videos, they're the exact same as The Last of Us Part 1 back on the PlayStation 3 in terms of the animations and in terms of the gameplay. And honestly, graphically looks great, but doesn't even look like that massive of an update based off of the PlayStation 3 version. And that's maybe not saying that much. Yes, the PS3 version is two generations ago, but when that game first came out onto the PS3, one of the best looking games, if not the best looking game that we had seen really great i couldn't believe how they had pulled that off on the ps3 but now we have a remake on the ps5 which is an extremely much more powerful console and they're selling this game at 70 dollars, which people are expecting there to be a reason to be able to pay that 70 dollars in order to get a big upgrade from the original version and obviously from these gameplay videos i don't think there is a reason whatsoever for the 70 dollar price take for this game it really just seems like it is a graphical upgrade to it just a nice layer of paint to make people who haven't played this game before guess get the best looking best version of the game but besides that there is no reason in my opinion to go out and spend the 70 dollars on this game for the majority of people and the reason why i think this is a big deal because if you remember at the summer games fest they came out and they completely pitched this as something brand new it was going to be the best version new gameplay all that type of stuff with this video really hyping it up and then also on top of that talking about how they were taking the multiplayer and releasing it as its own release because it was too ambitious and the reason i think they did all of this is because if you remember with playstation they have come out jim ryan talking about it that they want to release 10 live service games up until 2020 or by 2026 and to be able to do that instead of offering the multiplayer as an addition to the last of us part two I feel like Jim Ryan came to Naughty Dog and said, hey, we need to meet this goal. Our investors want to see this. You need to take out that multiplayer. You need to release it as its standalone game, but we need to have something that will make us money at the end of 2022. And Naughty Dog with The Last of Us Part 1 knew that people are going to be excited and people are going to go out and buy this game again for the third time or the first time or the second time, depending on how many times you've picked up this game. And it will make the investors happy with the amount of money they made. So they are marketing it as this brand new experience with the last of us part one but from the leaks we are seeing it doesn't seem that, that is the case and a lot of people are upset about this okay jumping over here to tmnt the kawabunga collection now this is a collection of 13 retro tmnt games it had been announced previously but we did not have a release date and now we have the release date and it is august 30th 2022 which i'm extremely extremely excited about i actually pre-ordered the special edition of this which looks really cool with the artwork and all that type of stuff but it has 13 games from the 8-bit and the 16-bit eras of video games if you haven't played any of these games i highly recommend checking them out 
whether in this collection or in another way. But you can see the games that they have here. You have the TMNT arcade version, Turtles in Time, the TMNT NES version, TMNT 2, the NES version, TMNT 3, Manhattan Project, awesome game, TMNT uh, Tournament Fighters, you got Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo, one that I highly remember playing that all the time. Then you have the Tournament Fighters for Super Nintendo. You have the Hyperstone Heist on Sega Genesis. I also really remember that one. That game was pretty cool. Then you have Tournament Fighters on Sega Genesis version as well. Follow the Foot Clan for Game Boy, Back from the Sewers for Game Boy, and Radical Rescue from Game Boy. So there's 13 games. For me personally, I've only played maybe about three or four of those 13 games. So I'm really excited to jump in and try them all out. But I think this is a very, very cool collection. Lots of great games in here. The TMNT games back in the day, the arcades on the Super Nintendo, on the NES, on the Sega Genesis, a ton of fun. So August 30th is the release date. Keep your eye out on that if you want to check it out. And then finally here, we have some news about potentially gear six as it looks like the coalition is really now hiring a lot of people to get to work on the new gears of war game they have put out six new job openings and they're recruiting developers for a new gears of war game the job listing here says the coalition is a microsoft first party development studio located in vancouver canada we are the official home of the Gears of War franchise and our objective is to forge the future of the IP and push the limits of Microsoft's entertainment platforms and devices. Our team is comprised of deep creative and technical talent from across our industry and beyond working cohesively to delight our fans and pass expectations of what is possible. Then you can see the breakdown here of the careers that they are hiring for and it really seems like that they are looking to make that new AAA experience in Unreal Engine 5 for a brand new Gears game, which you can probably assume is going to be Gears 6. This is going to be a massive, massive game for the Coalition and for Xbox. Who knows when, when we are going to be getting it, but everyone is extremely excited about seeing more about this, mainly because, I mean, Gears is a huge franchise, but because of the Unreal Engine 5 side of things, as they were the ones that partnered in making that matrix demo which if you downloaded and played that matrix demo in unreal engine 5 really gave you a good glimpse as to what the future of video games could look like could feel like the realism of some of the stuff in the, the world it was extremely extremely impressive and the coalition was a main partner in that and they're going to be using their skills from that and their skills with unreal engine 5 for gears 6 which gears 5 if you haven't played it yet already an incredible looking game hive buster is one of the best looking games i would say on these current generation of consoles so to think what they're going to be able to do with gear 6 is exciting and it looks like they're getting ready for that that's it for me guys let me know your thoughts on the nft situation the cancellation and delays from ubisoft gear 6 the last of us remake leaks everything else i talked about in this video if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're new here and you liked what you saw consider hitting that subscribe button thank you all for watching thank you for your support and i'll catch you in the next video